Thanks for joining. Today, uh, we're going to be discussing, we're going to be hanging out, we're going to be starting off talking about this book. This book is out today. This book is something I've been working on for a long time. This book is called Create, Connect, Repeat. Uh, if you've noticed over here on the wall, there's a sign that says Create, Connect, Repeat. It's kind of a, not only just a, the title of a book, but uh, the, the kind of the, I don't know if it's a mantra necessarily, but it's a uh, phrase that I use to help our artists with building careers. And I decided during the pandemic that I was going to write it down. Everything we've been doing at Outside of Music, Outside of Music is my record label and media company uh, that helps to get artist music out um, into the world. And it's about celebrating artists. We know we focus on bringing artist music to life. And that's where this book comes in. So Create, Connect, Repeat is a guide to building an artistic career in the 21st century. Uh, it's how to's, it's big picture, it's kind of the state of things now. So, you know, the problem with social media and the internet and everything is it changes really fast. So as soon as I've written stuff down in this book, it's from a year ago already, and now things have changed again. So I try not to get too bogged down in this book in the details of specific um, tactics on social media platforms in terms of building your career, but there are some in there, and there are some that hopefully are evergreen. I want to use this show, this Q&A, as kind of an example of what I mean uh, on the highest level with talking about this concept of create, connect, repeat. So create, connect, repeat is allowing you as an artist to focus on making stuff. That's the create part. Connecting is how you're going to connect, uh, deciding what you're going to do, deciding how you can reach your audience, deciding how you can be valuable to your audience and showing up week after week after week, month after month, and uh, providing value, you know, answering questions, doing things, being around, being available, uh, not just like posting things out into the internet and expecting everyone to come to you. So that's what this is about. You can see this is not episode 100. It's actually episode 101. So we are on episode 101 of Ask Nick, and that is show has been going on for two years it took me two years obviously there's 52 weeks in a year so it took me two years to get past that and there's some weeks off it took two and a half years really but um it is the you know number one reason part it was part it was the part and parcel of the journey to creating this book was also doing this at the same time we went through a pandemic together we went through uh, the pre times the post times and here we are and so we're going to talk all things uh, create, connect, repeat. I see some questions coming in. That's great. Please feel free to drop them into the chat on uh, any wherever you're watching from. You know, feel free to drop those things in. Um, I am gonna. I just want to read the first part of this uh, to kind of launch us off uh, into our Q and A for this week, just so you kind of get the idea of what this book is. What is create, connect, repeat? This is reading time, story time, story time with Nick. So. What is create, connect, repeat? It's a phrase I use to frame the micro and the macro in career strategy, content strategy, and even life strategy. For building the career of every artist, it truly is at the center of what you need to do to reach the heights that you desire. It does not have to be complicated. Just stick to the framework and give it time. Allow the process to take its course. Stick to the work. Stick with the process. Create what you want to create. Share your work generously with those around you. Do it again and again and again. You create the art that you want to create. You work to connect that work with audiences who are interested in the type of content, music, or art that you're making. And then you build a path to longevity through repetition. Most great artists do not just make one album. Certainly there are one-hit wonders, but we're most likely not trying to emulate those people. Artists make a series of, of albums that document their artistic vision and journey over the course of their lives and careers. It's a living record of their artistry. You must iterate again and again. You must repeat the process. When you focus on the process, the destination is a byproduct of your commitment to that process. By creating interesting and thoughtful work for people who are engaged with you in that journey, you can build a sustainable life that breaks the mold of the starving artist. You deserve to live the life you want to live while making the art that you want to share. You can use this methodology to frame the smallest tasks and the largest projects. You can frame it around audience development, albums, 
tours, educational events, any part of your career that you seek to develop as an artist. At its core, this process is designed to offer you a blueprint to success that focuses on you creating and sharing. It focuses on generosity, excuse me. It focuses on generosity of artistry, creativity, and vision. It focuses on building one step at a time. It focuses on finding one person at a time who becomes interested in you and your work. Over the course of this book, we will explore ideas, strategies, and practical steps to take to build the career you envision as an artist and creative person. So that's the big picture. That's that's where we're that's where we're headed. You know, that's what we're talking about in this book. And before we get any further, and I see these questions coming in, and feel free to drop yours uh, in relation to this or anything else. And maybe we'll read a few other passages from the book at some point. Maybe I'll just flip to a random page. But uh, I need to say some thank yous. You know, there's there's no way to create a book um, without help. And this is my first written book, written words. And as people will know, anyone that knows me knows that writing maybe is not my strongest suit grammar. I like to put a lot of extra commas and exclamation points in my messaging. So uh, I need to thank, uh, first of all, uh, Sarah for helping me with this and uh, constantly hearing me complain, work through ideas and, uh, and all of that. So thank you. And second, I need to thank uh, Simeon Davis, who was helpful in editing this book. Uh, I need to thank Jeremy Siskin for connecting me with some people that helped get the layout done. I need to thank Jamie Rywick and B-Side Graphics for helping design a great cover uh, and, and uh, making it look iconic, uh, look like something. If I had done it myself, it would be a lot more boring than this. So um, I'm excited to be able to do that. So thank you to all those people. Thank you to everyone that's read this. If you were a person that uh, heard me talk through the, these ideas over the last five years, I appreciate you. I know my students think uh, it's a little obnoxious, my create, connect, repeat uh, mantra or whatever you want to call it. But uh, it's important. And I think uh, it's important to think in the long term, think about longevity, think about creating um, a path to success that allows you to do the work and not, and not get caught up in um, tactics. So I see some questions coming in, so we'll jump into some questions and then we'll jump back into maybe some other parts of the book as we're celebrating today. And I'm celebrating today and I thank you for being here and I thank you for checking out the book. And again, if you're checking this out and you're on YouTube, if you're on Facebook, go down below. You can find the links to get your own copy of Create Connect Repeat out today, April 5th, 2022. So I'm excited. i got some events coming up where we're going to talk about uh, this and other things, but let's see. Let me get these questions nice and big so I can read them. The screen's a little far away, but uh, in modern, in the modern day world of music business, what are the most effective characteristics of being a resourceful networker? Well, at this point, you know, obviously it's easy to like slide into anybody's DMs and just hit them up, but the most important and resourceful thing you can do is figure out what somebody needs and offer to help them with it or to give it to them or to do it for them. Um, what can you do for that person? You know, Because when you do something for that person, you stand out from the crowd of all the people that are just asking the same questions over and over and over and over again. You know, People come on to our show here, they leave a question and um, I'm grateful that they took the time to do it, but a lot of times uh, we've answered that question before, right? So that's just a very one, one level of like all the people that come into someone's orbit. So if you go to someone that's like a hundred times more well-known than myself, uh, you can imagine how that amplifies up. So if you're trying to connect with those people, you're trying to get into their circle, you're trying to, uh, you know, get something from them, you need their help, you want their advice, you have to give them something. So the most important thing you can do to be a resourceful networker is uh, not ask for anything and try to give, try to give people answers to their questions, try to give um, resources, try to give your time, offer your time, or just solve, the, solve a problem for them. Um, you might be able to find out what some of the issues are that they have by watching their content, looking at their stories, and then offering to help. What does maturity as an artist look, feel, and sound like? Maturity as an artist is, um, knowing what you stand for. Maturity as an artist is being clear in what you're communicating, regardless of the style. 
it doesn't really matter if the style is good or bad or good or bad clean or dirty or bluesy or 20th century classical like any part of the music like as long as it's clear to your intention that's what makes a mature artist is that their intention is clear and that they're able to achieve it clearly i think you should be far more concerned with your current trajectory than your current results when sticking to the trajectory of a creative project how do you stay true to the goals you stay true to the if so look i mean if we're, we're not there's some goal setting stuff we're talking about setting goals and uh making projects and achieving projects in this book so um you know setting a, a goal a goal is not a good goal unless it has breakdownable components because if it's a huge project and you just shoot for the huge project you're never going to achieve it because it's too many things it's too all over the place and you're going to struggle and so you have to break it down so how do you break it down well you make a path you know like path to success or what are the components what are all the different things i need to achieve along the way so once you get one it leads to the next it leads to the next it leads to the next and uh, in my estimation you know that means that you should break down those goals from the beginning so if you're on a path and you've created a trajectory you're, you're kind of checking these marks along the way you know you don't run a marathon and you don't see a marker until the end there's a marker every mile if not shorter every half mile to give you that sense of progress because once you've got progress you know it, it's a it goes again and again and again the progress it just is a snowball effect you know so that's how you stay clear as you build that as you build that um the momentum you don't want to quit right uh for example this use this show as an example i set out i'm going to make 100 episodes of this show before i decide what to do with it i don't know what it is or what it's going to be but i'm going to make 100 and 100 episodes and what ended up happening uh, in the meantime i wrote a book and here we are in episode 101 and uh i get to celebrate with all of you who are watching live now and who are going to watch this content in the future uh to check out the book or just to hear what we're talking about it's uh you know i didn't intend i didn't start this show these q and a's with the idea of you know having a book so you never know where the path's going to lead it's not always a straight line but it's definitely uh having that trajectory and sticking to it even when you don't want to you know you can think about fitness goals you could f think about you know training for sports whatever you know all those things are related congrats on the news book thanks man appreciate it looking forward to reading you indicated the live stream started when you began writing the book was it mainly as a long-term marketing project or was it also helping you to test out your content work out your ideas slash get ideas yeah it, starting this show had nothing to do with writing this book uh, it does have to do with the thesis of the book uh, this create connect repeat thesis this idea um, I wanted to create consistent content I had from 2016 to 2018 I had made it a goal to make more YouTube content make more educational content and then when I started this job at UNT and started to get busy teaching trying to keep everything rolling um, you have uh, limited time so some some of those youtube videos started to slip by the wayside and i need to find a way to be able to block out half an hour 45 minutes and be able to make content so what i decided was there's lots of questions i was getting in my dms lots of questions i was getting um emails comments etc and i was like okay if i just make a time i can do that be here chat with everyone and then um it creates content it's valuable i can share afterwards right so um, I decided to use it as a, we talk, I talk about batching in this book. Batching is one of the most essential tasks for me to get a lot of things done. And that means creating a lot of content at the same time. So I sit here, I talk with you all for 45 minutes, and then I have weeks and weeks and weeks of micro content that I can use in different ways. So that's part of it. That's good. It's part of my creative strategy to uh, continue to make new stuff all the time and have new things to share. So, um, the Ask Nick show had nothing to do with writing this book, um, but it's kind of been in parallel along the way. Um, the book, I mean, I started writing blog posts to, to try to get the book going and that didn't work. And I decided I just need to sit down and write um, these thoughts out because, you know, the number one thing that people want, don't want to do as artists is talk about marketing, talk about business. But it's so essential. It's so essential. And um, I know whenever I make content around music marketing and music business, it's the least popular content that I make. 
And, uh, but it's the most important thing is how you're going to tell your story. People don't want to focus on it. They want to just go out and just play. And I wish that you could, and some people can, but if the other, other ones of us that like, you've got to create a story and the marketing, the branding, all that stuff is so important. And I know nobody cares. Nobody cares. That's okay. I care. I'm here. It's in here. Do you have studies for jazz articulation on trombone? Yes, they're on YouTube. You can find them if you search Nick Finzer articulation, you'll find them. Much like making all of your records, how will this book give you insights of getting the right direction to release your first record? So I think what you would learn from reading the book and thinking about your first record is that you should be starting, starting releasing content and building your audience today and not worry so much about that first record. In the jazz world, you know, this is something, I'm gonna make a video about this eventually. And I've been thinking about it is that in the jazz world we get we're too obsessed with albums albums have changed and we have not changed with it um, so when you think about an album in the in the heyday of jazz um, it's like there's like 25 to 30 minutes of music and there's two or three songs on each side of the record but then all of a sudden we started going 45 50 60 minutes where the music and we just get obsessed with this whole collection of music. And you go to the pop side of the world and, you know, things are about singles or about songs, right? And so I'm not saying that we only need to focus on singles or songs as jazz artists, but you can start your journey by getting, I just need to get one song. That's it. I'm focusing on one song, one mixed, mastered, released song, right? That's the create. And you connect, you share it with as many people as you can. Right. That's you starting to build your audience. That's on email. That's on social media. That's on uh, in person. That's everywhere. You're doing all of the different components and then you do it again and you do another song. Three months later, you release another song. If you do it eight times, now you got enough for an album. And now you've got an audience, too, because you've built it up along the way. So they're all into all these things are interrelated without going into a whole diatribe of the whole thing. You know, your insight is that you start now. And that it doesn't, that one thing, any one thing doesn't matter. It's the journey of the whole thing. It's not about the first record. It's about the first 10 records. Uh, so you just have to get started and you have to release something. And then you gotta do it again and again and again and again and again and again. What's your favorite key to play in, whether it's a blues or just a tune? Blues, I like F. A key, G. My least favorite key is B flat. Second least favorite key, E flat. I like G flat major is a good key too. G and G flat lay really well on trombone. And then uh, third would have to be A flat. And I like playing an A too. So A through G flat are good keys for me on trombone. What's the brand of trombones of your choice? I play King trombones. I play King 3B plus. This is a Con, it's sitting here. Uh, Con 88H, it's an old one. But I play a King 3B plus that's sitting over there, just off frame. Who in the music marketplace has been resourceful to you when trying to create the concept for this book? I didn't draw very much inspiration from the music industry for this book because I think that the music industry generally is broken and that the music business is not really a thing. Music business is not a thing. Business, of course, is a thing, you know, but music business is kind of a convoluted, means many different things to many different people. So to me, uh, I didn't really look to the music industry for inspiration. I looked to, toward people that make popular things. Seth Godin, a great writer, you know, thinking about people like Tim Ferriss, a great podcaster, or someone like Gary Vaynerchuk on YouTube is just this whole thing, a businessman talking about social media, thinking about social media. There's a lot, a lot there, but I'm, the music industry is a funny, funny place. And I, and I don't necessarily want to limit you or anyone else to just thinking about music, music business as somehow different or disconnected. We want to think that we're special. Like, oh, it's the music business that's different. It's, just, it's still just business. You still need people to like your music. What's the best piece of music you've played? Oh, I don't know. There's a lot of great music. I couldn't pick one song or one piece or one night or I couldn't do it. When telling the story of your artistic vision, how do you know an audience will be connected to your vision? How have you come to accept the criticism that comes from releasing a product? How do you know an audience will connect? You don't. Uh, you don't until you try. Um, you observe what other people are doing and what people connect to. Um, and you have to realize that different people connect to different things, different parts of the industry to connect to different things. People want different things from an artist. So it's your job not to pander to everyone, but to figure out who it is you want to reach, right? Like 
when I talk about trombone stuff, when I play a trombone album, uh, a trombone, ten trombone mood indigo arrangement and record it, like I know who's gonna like that, right? People who like trombone are gonna like that, and then some music fans they'll be surprised that trombone sounds good in a group, right? But I don't have like the idea that if I put this out, if I put out a solo trombone recording, trombonists are gonna check it out. People who like adventurous music are gonna check it out. But people that like straight ahead organ trio jazz probably gonna be like, what's the solo trombone thing, right? So understanding through experience, through watching and observing what other people do, you can kind of figure out what might work for you. Um, in terms of handling criticism, um, you have to take it with a grain of salt because that's one person's opinion, right? But you also have to do the same thing when people compliment you, right? Like, you can't say like, oh, that person who criticized me is wrong, but this person who said I'm great is right, right? I try to kind of go in the middle uh, and like take a grain of salt. Any, like a great, great comment or a negative comment, and it all kind of just feeds in. It's like, okay, that person thinks this and this person thinks this. And I think these things about these various other people, I'm like, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter at the end of the day, you know, and you just have to put stuff out that you believe in. I say, see Kevin says, the best music to play is your own, improvise every practice session. That's a great way to put it. You know, your personality, your music, your identity, you just have to share. And not everybody's gonna like it. Not everybody likes my music. I don't know who doesn't like it necessarily, but I know that there's gonna be people that don't just for the fact that I play trombone, number one. And number two, that I put out a lot of original music. A lot of people don't want to hear that. You know, a lot of people want to hear, play stand, play the standards, play things people know. Or some people will be like, that's not jazz, it's only jazz, jazz is this thing or that thing. And it ultimately doesn't matter. You just have to let it bounce off you. You have to go for what you believe in and be a, true to yourself as an artist at some point. Um, doing lots of different things is great, but you know, you just have to, have to know, take the good with the bad. What is the biggest piece of advice in music marketing someone gave you that changed your perspective of getting your product out there? The biggest piece of advice is that marketing is not the same as branding, and branding is not the same thing as marketing. And neither of those two things is the same as selling. Branding is what people think about you, what you stand for, and it's also the visual things, but what you look like, what you sound like, who your musical influences are, what it's it's all those things in someone's mind when they think Nick Finzer, what does that represent? Nick Finzer. Obviously me and many other things. My music, my writing, my music, my my record label, any of those things, whatever. All those things. This show. And then marketing is telling this that story, my story. Why should you care? Answer the question. Why should someone care? That's marketing. Why should I care? Tell Tell me why I should care. And then um, selling is like, oh, the, like tactics. Like here, buy my book. <laughs> That's selling, right? And so when we confuse them and we start to like go back and forth and interweave like the purpose of different pieces of content as either marketing, branding, or selling, if you mix them together, then people don't want to hear that. You know, you know, you got to segment them off. So that, that's the biggest piece of music marketing advice I can give you is market when you're marketing, tell your story. Brand when you're building brand. You know, do things that help people know who you are and what you're about. Market your stuff, tell your story. Why should they care? That's the answer. Answer that question. Why should anybody care? And then uh, selling is, you know, having an online store and allowing people to go and say, look, man, like the link is down below. You know, the price is gonna go up in a week. Any of these kind of things, like that's selling. That's the biggest advice I can give you. Keep them separate. They're different baskets. You gotta do all three, but you can't do all three at once. And if you try to do them all, you can do some marketing branding together, but you can't mix it in with selling. Since releasing music is centered on many platforms, YouTube, Spotify, SoundCloud, what is one thing you think could be improved more about how you release music on these sources? The most important thing you can do is not waste an opportunity once you've got someone's attention. Regardless of where you want to send them, try to not send them and try to engage them where they are. So you're here. I want to engage with you here on this platform. I am saying if you want to buy the book, go click this link. What I'm not saying is leave the stream and go 
and watch a video on YouTube or here's this, right? Because I want to engage here. And for example, what does that mean when it translates to like maybe a practical application? So that means on Instagram, keep people on Instagram. That's what they want you to do. On YouTube, keep people on YouTube. That's what they want you to do. Don't try to get them to go to Instagram. On Instagram, don't try to get them to go to Facebook or, or over to um, YouTube. You want to engage people where they are. If you're on Spotify, engage them on Spotify. You know, what do people want on Spotify, right? They want to find your music. They want to be able to search for you. They want to see a playlist. They want to, it's your track plus what else, you know? Creating moods, uh, playlists, those sort of things. Like think about how people use a platform, what they're looking for, and then work backwards from there, you know? Um, the biggest mistake I see people do is they try to make one post and say, go to all these other different places to find my music. No, just put the music there. You're wasting an opportunity once you have somebody's attention. If I have your attention on here, I want you to know today that this book is out. So I've mentioned a billion, jillion times. You're here, I'm holding it up, I'm showing you this book, Create, Connect, Repeat. It's out today because I want you to know that because it's important to me because I've been working on it for a long time. But if I just said, oh, Craig, can I go to learn about it, go over here. Like, no, I'm centering the whole thing around this. I'm holding the book. We're going to read some more from it in just a minute. And um, don't waste an opportunity to share the information rather than just telling somebody about the information. All right, so how to use this book. This book was written to be a point of action. That's the most important thing. This book is supposed to be a jumping off point for you to go and get what you want, to go and do your projects, to build your career. I want you to start taking action now. If opening this book or listening to me on this live stream is enough to get you going, go ahead and put the book down and go start creating. Skip the rest of the book if you want. Just think about the title, Create, Connect, Repeat, and you'll be on your way. Keep it as a mantra or a reminder or a saying that brings you back to focus on the process, the process of creating beautiful things, the process of building your career, the process of bringing passion and creativity to the various facets of your life. When you're ready, you can jump back in the book in, to get more technical and more tactical. The book is organized into three sections. So create is first. This focuses on the foundation of centering around the process of creativity. We will focus on what to make, ways to help direct your energy, thoughts and strategies around creativity and the creative process. Connect. This is how to build your audience. In this section, we talk about breaking down your audience, defining the roles of building a team around you, different ways to connect with that audience and ways to keep thinking about keeping the connectivity at the center of what you do. And then we repeat. Here, we will focus on how to build the, these ideas into the long-term view of your career. How do we iterate the processes that we've created? How do we build and monetize our artistic business? How do we commit and stay focused in the long run? And by long run, I mean 10, 20 years, not 10 days. The chapters can be read in order or as you wish, as if it were a choose your own adventure book. You might refer back to certain chapters for inspiration and in moving forward and others for tactical advice about building strategy around your projects. The intention of the book is to include both aspects, the micro and the macro, the tactical and the broad. Don't forget the purpose of why you picked up this book in the first place, to take action in the development of your career. No one built anything sitting on their phone, computer, or tablet just waiting for an opportunity. You must commit yourself to action, get reading, and then get doing. Most of the musical references in this book come from the world of jazz and creative music. Why? Well, maybe that's obvious. That's the world that I inhabit. However, the concepts that we are talking about can be applied to all genres of music and really any form of creative work. From jazz to classical, rock, pop, and beyond, simply substitute the examples for someone in the genre of music you are involved with. You'll find so many consistencies between great artists, regardless of the genre or output format. So um, I hope that has piqued your interest and you'll want to check out the book. Uh, I've given away the entire contents of this book in this show. You know, we've talked about all of these. You can go back and watch 100 hours of the Ask Nick live stream and you'll probably know the entire book by the time you watch all of that. But if you want it distilled down, go ahead and uh, check it out. What has been the most rewarding part of the connecting process for you? How can aspiring musicians gain confidence to go out and connect? Uh, well, connect is the most essential part, right? The thing that everyone misses out 
and somehow got turned around backwards in jazz at some point. And maybe it's entitlement. That's what some people would call it. Maybe it's just the state of things. Uh, but um, at some point, we forgot that we were supposed to go and build an audience. You know, we thought we went around that part. We just went, oh, we should be playing gigs and we should be getting paid for those gigs, right? I'm highly trained. I went to college for jazz. I, you know, I should be making it. I mean, I went to the best school, et cetera, et cetera. Nobody gives a crap <laughs> that's in the world. So what does that mean? You have to tell them why they, why they should care. That's the marketing point. So the connecting part is all of the marketing. It's all of the branding, right? The create part is what you're making. That's your artistry. That's you. Connecting is the marketing, the branding. So you got to go out and uh, build an audience. You know who has the most um, clout is the person with the biggest audience. Look, just look at social media. It's extremely evident. The people who have the most followers have all of the leverage. So what can you do within your genre or your micro area of music or whatever creative thing you're in? If you can build your audience and own your audience, not like own your audience as in like they'll do everything with you and follow you like a cult leader, but if you own your audience in that you have the, a way to contact them without having to pay to get to them like email like text messages all these various ways that we can get in touch with people if you own that connection then you can tell them about what you're doing and if you have passionate fans they're going to want to know right if they enjoy your music they want to know when you're coming to town and everything is related so think about all of your favorite artists they have audiences what it, it used to be that we would go out and tour to build audience and build awareness. You know, now you can do it online, right? But we think that we need the end result first, right? The audience isn't the byproduct. The audience is the thing you need to give, build leverage to do the things that you want. If you have a big enough audience, you can play as many gigs as you want. People are going to the gigs, nobody shows up, and they're still wanting to get paid and wondering why they're having a hard time. Well, if you did it the other way, and you played to get in front of people, to get people connected with your music, and then you would have people that wanted to come. If you have the audience first, then it doesn't matter. You know, we do all of these things. And in jazz in particular, we try to go around all the time because we don't want to put in the time. Because it's hard. It's the hardest thing to focus on. Like, I'm going to make this video and it's going to take me 10 hours. And I'm going to connect with one person. That's hard. That's really hard. But that's what you have to do. You know, I did tours for years when I released my albums, right? For years, losing money at every time because I wanted to get out, share the music, build connections, and start having people know that I existed, right? You have to invest in that part of the whole thing. You have to build an audience so people are going to show up. Uh, have you discovered an ideal ratio for time practicing creating marketing? No. <laughs> I need to practice more, personally. It's all right. It'll take, it, it'll take over. But the thing is that the whole thing about the book is not that you need to spend more time, it's that you just need to create a system. This is what I do, this is how I connect, and I'm gonna keep on doing it, right? You can see it, there's so many, it was so obvious at a certain point of YouTube, maybe five years ago, people that were uploading every week, two to three times, consistently, right? Whether it was in music or anything else, were building huge audiences and now they've turned it into live events, live shows. I mean, it's different. The algorithms have changed now. But at that point, it was that consistency. Just show up. It's the same thing. You just have to decide what you're going to make, whether it's albums, whether it's videos, whether it's content, whether it's singles, whether it's you're writing music, you're going to write a big band chart every week for the next 50 weeks. Whatever it is you're deciding to do, you're deciding ahead of time, and then you're executing. So whatever amount of time you can put into it, it doesn't matter like if it's 30 minutes a day 30 minutes a week just decide what it is and so you don't go into a spiral you know that's what i think you just got to decide for those who want to build themselves in their creative endeavor endeavors after college what are things they should know that most students often forget about once they graduate that you don't wait until you graduate you got to start now <laughs> there is no delineation between in college and after college in terms of your career and then the, the other thing that happens when people graduate is they they rely too much on what they did as a student, but now you're a professional. You don't want the professional world to look like, to look at you as a student. So you have to drop 
all of the ways that you talk about things to not talk about you like you're a student. You gotta change the way you market yourself. When you were living in New York and released Exposition, how did the process teach you about committing yourself to your own work regardless of thinking what people should know, thinking what people should know about you? That was the beginning of the journey. I didn't know anything. My first record, this, I just was throwing things against the wall. I didn't know what, what would happen, man. So, but yeah, with Exposition, I didn't know what I was doing, man. I just kind of was like figuring it out along the way. And I, that action, doing stuff is the most important thing. You won't learn about it until you do it wrong, right? Or even if I'm telling you this, like go and do stuff, go put out that first single and see like, oh man, like they mapped my Spotify profile onto the wrong person. Now I know another thing I gotta pay attention to. There's a lot of layers and it's not about those specifics. It's just about creating a system. That's what this whole thing is about. Building a life in music, building your career in an intentional way. Just hoping some stuff is gonna happen is a great way to be miserable. I hope that's useful. I'm so glad I could share some with all of you today. And I'm so glad you could be here. I know we didn't celebrate 100, but we're celebrating 101 uh, episodes of the live stream. And uh, yeah, I think we should be back next week. I'll, uh, I promise I won't just read from my book again next week. But as always, uh, please drop in any questions. In the meantime, I'll save them, try to save them for next week. And uh, if you're on YouTube, if you're on Facebook watching this later, links are down in the description if you do want to pick up a copy of the book. Uh, but like I said, um, and as you can see in the videos that are about to come out over the next couple of weeks, it's stuff that I've been talking about for years. And if you go back, you can go on to the Outside In Music channel. There's 50 episodes. I did a video show called Create, Connect, Repeat, talking about a lot of practical marketing advice. And uh, like I said, I know that it's not the thing that most people want to do. Everyone wants to focus on their art. But the difference between someone who knows how to build an audience and market themselves and someone who doesn't is, it's huge. You either, you either are doing it yourself or you have a team that's doing it. And if you're successful, show me somebody that isn't. Or sorry, show me somebody that isn't that also cares about their econo economics. There is definitely a case to be made that if you don't care about building a life uh, in any sort of way, and you're fine and you're cool just like whatever happens is happens and you're good with it then you don't have to worry about any of this but for most people that's not the case they want to have a little bit of um, the life that they they want to have to do the things they want to be able to be happy focus on the work that they want and that's what i want for you anyway so thank you all so much i'm glad to hang with you today um, drop in some questions send me an email buy the book etc etc but we'll catch you next week. See you later.